Okay, so in this presentation, we're going to go over gymnosperms. And, you know, here's a forest with, with some gymnosperm trees. So let's go ahead and, and get started and learn about their basic features. Okay, so we're going to look at the third group of plants. If you've seen the other two groups, uh, we're moving on to the seed-producing and the vascular plants. And there's really two categories of seed-producing vascular plants. And one are called gymnosperms. And here we see a cone, a cone on uh, probably a pine tree here. And, you know, pine is a great example of a gymnosperm. Well, you'll see what I mean by those seeds are not covered by a fruit as we go through this video. Examples of gymnosperms would be cycad, would be ginkgo, and conifers. Now, we're going to mainly focus our attention today on conifers. But in another video, and you can browse through my video library if you like, uh, eventually we'll talk more about angiosperms. And these are plants whose seeds are covered by a fruit. And so gymnosperms and angiosperms, these are the two seed-producing vascular plants. Now, this video is only going to cover gymnosperms, but like I said, if you want to learn more about the angiosperms, I have another video for that as well. So examples of angiosperms, again, you'll see that in another video, would be monocots, such as daffodils, and dicots, such as apple, apple trees. So, uh, but let's go ahead and focus our attention today on the gymnosperms. Uh, and before we get into gymnosperms specifically, let's just talk about seeds and their advantages. So whether it's a gymnosperm or angiosperm, they make seeds. And seeds provide advantages. Number one, seed plants, plants that make seeds, they don't depend on water to reproduce. The pictures that you see here on top is a moss and on the bottom is a fern. And these are seedless. And moss and ferns need to live in moist environments because they make sperm cells that actually swim through a layer of water in order to fertilize egg. Well, the seed plants, the gymnosperms and the angio angiosperms, they don't rely on water to reproduce. So they produce pollen, which is often carried by wind or by animals, pollinating animals like the bumblebee in the picture. So because they don't directly rely on water to reproduce, it allowed them to evolve elsewhere and, and diversify over more habitats. Uh, another advantage of seeds is that there's, uh, there's an embryo inside that seed that has uh, nourishment. The embryo inside of this seed has nutrition and nourishment to feed upon until the seed cracks open and the, the embryo, the seedling, then begins to do photosynthesis. So the embryo has nourishment. The embryo also has protection, a hard shell. So seeds, because they are hard and offer some sort of protection, uh, give the embryo a better chance of survival. And seeds, not only do they offer the embryo a better chance of survival, but they allow the embryo to be dispersed. So seeds often have wings. Now, we're not implying that the wings flap and produce flight. It's not that kind of wing. But they often will rotate and glide. You may have heard of helicopter seeds. When they fall from the tree, they glide through the air. And they might land on the ground, let's say, 50 feet away from the parent tree. And by landing away from the parent tree, it increases their odds of growing. Imagine if it were to fall straight down and land right beside or right underneath the parent tree. The parent tree already has a head start in growth and would most likely you know, take all the nutrients and the seeds that fell directly underneath the tree probably wouldn't uh, wouldn't survive and wouldn't have the resources needed to grow. So by being carried by the wind, they're able to be dispersed. And not just wind, but again, seed plants are, are again, now we're looking at angiosperms right here. Here's a bird, you know, eating some uh, berries and fruits. And, and eventually the seeds will be dispersed in a new location. And what do I mean by dispersed? Well, the seeds will most likely pass through the digestive tract of the animal and then will be deposited or pooped out in another location. So let's actually look at the gymnosperms. I want to mention the category called conifers or conifers. So conifers, 
conifers. These are a, a type of gymnosperm, and these are the ones we're going to focus our attention on today. Conifers, uh, one of their defining characteristics are their needle-like leaves, and it helps to reduce water loss. Many of these grow in cold environments, and so having big, broad, flat leaves like you see in warmer forests, well, if, if, if conifers had big, broad, flat leaves, well, they'd probably lose too much water through evaporation. And so by having needle-like leaves, it reduces their water loss, which is really important considering they go for months without rain. So conifers are quite common to the lumber industry. And so uh, you know, the, the wood that is used for building materials uh, typically comes from conifers. Conifers, uh, one, one of the way they get their names, conifers, is they reproduce with cones. Now, there are different types of cones. There are male cones, which are called pollen cones, and like the name implies, male pollen cones produce pollen. And then there are what are called female seed cones. And notice how the two cones look quite different. So uh, the female seed cones look more woody. And, you know, these are the, the cones that we're used to seeing if, if you've ever, uh, you know, just gone on a hike and you see cones that are falling and landed on the ground. So the male pollen cones produce pollen. The female seed cones produce eggs and eventually seeds. And we're going to get into that process in just a few moments. And so conifers... Um, eventually, when they produce seeds, there's embryos inside of those seeds. And here's a person kind of just shaking a cone, and you can see seeds have fallen onto the, the table that, that the person um, has is shaking the cone over. And so inside of those seeds are little embryos that can hopefully crack open and begin to grow and grow into a full-grown, perhaps, evergreen tree. So evergreen is one example, pine, redwood, cedar, these are all examples of conifers. So when we look at the conifer life cycle, okay, um, if you recall, plants alternate between diploid and haploid stage, this alternation of generations. And if you remember, the diploid stage is what we call the sporophyte stage. So here's a, a mature adult sporophyte, you know, pine tree, and, uh, and this tree is been growing for decades in a forest, pretend. Well, notice how there are male pollen cones on the left of the tree, and there's a female seed cone on the right of the tree. Now, in reality, there's multiple pollen cones and multiple seed cones, but for simplicity, I've only drawn one of each here. So if we focus our attention on the male pollen cones. So male pollen cones are, are going to uh, will create microspores through the process of meiosis. And so microspores are haploid, and microspores represent the gametophyte stage. So the microspores will ultimately develop into pollen, pollen grains. And here's a magnified image of a pollen grain. And so again, microspores and pollen are the male gametophyte, because these are the haploid stages of the life of a plant, or of a, of a conifer. And so ultimately, this pollen will be released into the air. And you notice how the pollen grain even has two little wing structures um, near the top of the picture that kind of help it glide a little bit through the air. And so in my animation, here we have a male pollen cone releasing pollen into the air. Okay, well, we'll follow that pollen in just a moment. So before we follow that pollen, let's now focus our attention on the seed cones, the female seed cones. So if we zoom on into a female seed cone, what we see are these, uh, these when the seed cones open, there are these little gaps. These are these little individual branches of a seed cone are called scales. And so if we kind of look at one scale, let's zoom on in to one scale. And when we zoom on in here, we have one single scale. And inside of, of each individual scale here, is a megaspore that will grow through the process that is created through the process of meiosis. And so I've highlighted the, the female megaspore. And again, ultimately, this becomes, this is the female gametophyte. This is the haploid stage in the life of a conifer. And inside of that gray circle that I've labeled the female gametophyte, there's an egg, the egg waiting to be and so through the process of pollination, that egg will eventually become fertilized. 
And so here comes a male pollen grain. Notice that there's a black dot in the middle. So that orange circle is our male pollen grain. And that black dot in the middle is the sperm cell that's inside of the pollen grain. And so what ultimately happens is a pollen tube will begin to grow towards the egg. And in reality, this may take months to grow, only a few millimeters perhaps. But ultimately, a pollen tube will grow from the sperm, or excuse me, a pollen tube will grow from the pollen and penetrate into the female gametophore. Okay, so now we've set up fertilization, where the sperm and the egg will fuse together to make a zygote. So the pollen tube has grown, and now that the pollen tube has grown, that sperm cell will travel down the pollen tube into the megaspore, which is again the female gametophyte. And therefore, the sperm and the egg will fuse, fertilization will occur and a zygote will form. Now, over time, the zygote will then begin to divide and grow into an embryo, and that's what we see in the animation right there with the green structure as the embryo. Well, also, as time goes on, the surrounding seed coat begins to harden into a protective seed with the embryo trapped on the inside. Well, now, if we zoom back out to that seed cone that we saw a few moments ago, you'll notice that in every individual scale, there is now a seed, again, assuming that pollination and fertilization were successful. In every scale, there is now a seed. So when the cone opens, multiple seeds will be released from one single cone. And ultimately, the seeds will be released and will hopefully grow into a young sporophyte, which will repeat this whole process. So here we have our, our tree with the, the, the female seed cone, and we see little helicopter seeds are, are being released from, from the cone. Well, you know, let's go, follow. let's go follow one of those seeds that just fluttered out of the seed cone. And when we do, here it comes, and eventually the female, uh, excuse me, eventually the, the seed lands, the helicopter seed lands on the ground, and over time, over time, a young sporophyte begins to grow, and as the years go by, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger until eventually it reaches the age of sexual maturity, where it too produces pollen cones and seed cones to restart the whole process. So there you go. There's a, a brief overview, a brief description of gymnosperms and, and the life cycle of conifers. So if you're in my biology class, go ahead and pause the video and try to answer these questions. I'd be happy to check your answers for accuracy, either before school or after school one day. So good luck.